What's up guys, this is Docus. Welcome back to another gaming video. We're playing some Genshin Impact. So, and so as you can see, we're having an update. There was an update, and let's check out the new features the game has in store for us. First of all, there's the Wish. Whoa, a new character! The Wanderer. <laughs> he looks actually pretty cool. He looks like Scramucci, the chief from the boss, boss battle. Here we have Arataki Ito. Some new weapons. And that's it. I'll optimize path. Hopefully I get that. I kind of like... I kind of... Well, I hear we can get the Raiden Shogun, so I'll save up. Once, there was a glorious this kingdom, kingdom established, established among, among the, the heavens. heavens. From that kingdom, kingdom came a crowned heir. Tasked with seeking out the Genesis Pearl from the Kingdom of Darkness. The first crowned heir began her journey of seeking the Pearl. But she was deceived, and the memory of her noble origins faded. She Whoa, now believed that's a pretty that she was the prop queen of the Kingdom story. of Darkness. But take heart. A second crowned heir had already taken up the path where the first had stumbled. This is the story of your journey. Of your tale to be told. Well. Check it out. Huh. Why don't we try some Genius Invocation Incation TCG first? I'm kind of interested in the gameplay. It looks so cool. Go to Mondstadt's Alchemy Store. Alright, let's go, go to Mondstadt. Good thing I got teleportation. Whoa, I guess Mondstadt looks the same, as always. So if you guys don't know, I'll be, I'll be subscribed, uh, I'm subscribed to the Genshin Impact Gaming Channel, so I'll be giving you fully, uh, uh, full updates on Genshin Impact related stuff, Skylanders related stuff, and Fortnite related stuff. So keep an eye out for my YouTube shorts. Alright, so let's go talk to Sucrose over there. So, Sucrose, the package you mentioned that you received before, it's not dangerous, is it? You need to be careful when you're opening packages. I once had a friend mail me some research materials, and all the bouncing around in transit caused a reaction. Once I opened it, oh, it let out a stench that could wake the dead. If your package contains anything like that, then maybe you should check with Albedo first and see what he thinks. No. This package didn't contain any hazardous materials. To me, it's so gross! What are you two chatting about? Oh, hey, you two. Uh, we're just talking about a strange package that Sucrose received recently. A strange package? Yes. I believe it's from a Sumero scholar who came here to study in Mondstadt. It's most likely a thank you gift for collaborating on some research together. Huh? A package from an academia scholar? Oh, then there wasn't anything dangerous inside. Just a bunch of strange cards. I think I've seen Timaeus with some similar looking cards before. So I came to ask him about what they might be. Uh, you've, you've seen me with some cards? <laughs> Maybe those were the testing cards used for distinguishing reagents. No, they didn't look like test cards. Here, have a look. Whoa! Check out that card! Kind of, it looks exactly like her! Oh, you meant these? Huh, 
Sucrose, have you really never seen these before? No, never. Recently, I've been spending all my time up in the mountains working on cultivating pentatanic sweet flowers. Why? Is this an area of research that has started trending in the alchemical community during my absence? <laughs> you could definitely say that it's trending, but not as an area of research. It's a card game that's been getting really popular these days. Really? A game that's popular? I heard teasers about it on the internet, but I never I knew it was very popular. It's called Genius Invocation TCG. Yeah, I heard that name. What is it? Genius Invocation TCG! Genius Invocation TCG! Haven't you heard of it before? Apparently, it's a game that was invented by a scholar in the academia. People from all over are playing it now. That's right. The game's been catching on lately. The Yae Publishing House in Inazuma has even published a series of light novels based on the game. The story is really good. Wow, I gotta read this story, but I fear it's maybe long. It starts with a young guy in Sumeru who finds an ancient casket of tomes in the attic. He opens it and discovers that the soul of an ancient TCG player called the Crocodile King has been captured inside. It turns out that the Crocodile King was King Deshret's viceroy, who battled an opponent named the Ibis King. During the match, the Crocodile King fell prey to his opponent's scheme and was sealed away in the Casket of Tomes. After being unexpectedly released by the kid, the Crocodile King possesses him and helps him to gradually climb the ranks and become a legendary TCG player. Uh, Timaeus. Huh? No. I was just thinking about that time you requested an extension on your progress report deadline, citing personal reasons for the delay. <clears throat> well, uh, I did go through a phase recently where I wasn't putting enough focus on my work, but it's under control now. I've committed to not even touch Genius Invocation TCG until I've made enough progress in my research. <sighs> well, that's unfortunate. Oh? Why is that? Well, since it's a gift from a researcher I've collaborated with, I thought that I should at least try to learn the rules. That way, I could say that I at least tried to appreciate his gift. All right! And since it's a game from Sumeru, who knows? Playing it might even make you smarter! Wait until Paimon plays it enough to become smarter than you! Then you'll be sorry! Although, it seems like we can't learn how to play it anytime soon, because Timaeus has given up for a while. <laughs> well, research is my priority, you know. But, if you'd like to learn the rules of Genius Invocation TCG, then I'd actually suggest you go to the Cat's Tale. Yep, that's the place. It's where everyone in the community goes to play when they have time. They gather there, trade cards, and they're very welcoming to new players. Trying to learn the rules can be intimidating at first, but it's a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. Understood. Traveler? Paimon? Let's go to the cat's tail and try asking around. Alright, let's go to the cat's honest, tail. Hearing Timaeus talking about the game has also piqued my curiosity. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get going! Whoa, so Genius Invocation TCG must be some kind of card game. Hmm. Maybe if I, after I learn the rules of playing the game, maybe I can take the liberty of bringing the game into real life. You know, like they did with Yu-Gi-Oh! In the, in the TV series.
so it was really more of a, a more of a trading card game, kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, which, by the way, Pokemon kind of sucks, if you ask me. Yu-Gi-Oh is the real gamer playing. Welcome to the Cat's Tale. Ah, <laughs> it's the Traveler and Paimon. What a nice surprise. Oh, and Sucrose the Alchemist. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> I'm afraid I've already told you before. Fur from the Cat's Tail staff is not for sale, no matter how much Mora you offer. Uh, don't worry, Margaret. We're not here for that research project I told you about last time. Ah, uh, Sucrose. Uh, oh, I just wanted to tell. Actually, Margaret, we're here to learn more about Genius Invocation TCG. Ah, Genius Invocation TCG. We were just talking about that game. You see, more and more people have been gathering at the Cat's Tail to play. So I thought, why not have a dedicated staff to serve the new customers? Speaking of which, I believe you've already met. Hmm? Met who? You know, Prince. This is the Cat's Tail after all. So I thought having a cat take care of our new customers would be quite a nice touch. Ah, allow me to interpret. <clears throat> Prince says that the word customer is much too loose of a term, and we should instead refer to anyone who loves dueling with cards as TCG players. Hmm, <laughs> my mistake. So it seems I haven't introduced you yet. This is Prince and Shuyin. They will be in charge of taking care of our TCG players. Ah, I'm afraid I must correct you there, ma'am. Only Prince, the strongest and most formidable TCG player of all, is capable of providing valuable guidance to our new players. The average player is incapable of grasping the subtlety and sheer genius behind Prince's every play, and he has no choice but to rely on me to communicate with everyone. I am- Wow! Another guy who can understand animals! How can you use such a crude word as animal to describe the one and only prince? He is special and the- Oh, what's that? Shu Yen, in the eyes of the common folk, I look no different than any other ordinary cat. It's a natural mistake to make and you shouldn't overreact. Ah, understood. I do apologize. Wow, you can understand animals? Wow, you are some kind of sort. <sighs> you can understand animals, bro? Mao, wow, you are some kind of sorcerer. Hmm. It seems he really is capable of communicating with the cat. Could this be the result of some modification to the language center of his brain? Seriously, how can he get all of that from a simple meow? Yes, it was the sacred duels of Genius Invocation, TCG, that formed and cemented our bonds of mutual understanding. It's my firm belief that by simply playing the game, players can develop a deeper level of understanding between one another. That's right. And when people don't understand Yu-Gi-Oh, playing the game will have a better understanding. So... Playing Genius Invocation TCG fosters some sort of a telepathic link between players. Hmm, that's a that's a that's an interesting way to look at it, but I guess that's your opinion. I guess. Hmm. Somehow Paimon doubts that. <laughs> Sometimes you're an unbeliever, Paimon. Uh huh. Anyway, if you'd like to know anything about Genius Invocation TCG, then please ask Shuyin. Uh, who will? Though I'd love to explain more myself, it's time for my daily walk. I'll let Prince play a game with you and walk you through all the rules. Just as a seasoned warrior can foresee the path of his opponent's sword. <clears throat> That's what Prince said. Oh, Prince doesn't want to play with us, huh? Fine! Then Prince doesn't have to! We'll play- I'm sorry, but from the day I met the mighty Cardmaster Prince, I swore an oath that my hands would live solely to hold the cards and not to play them. I will never play another match of my own again. 
If Prince is unwilling to play, then I guess we should look for an alternative. Hmm. <gasps> How about this? Diona! Yeah, blah, blah, blah. What is it? I'm pretty busy over here, you know? Huh. Why is it that every player that sets foot in here to play Genius Invocation TCG has to have a drink? Seriously. Games and drinks don't mix. Don't they get that? What can I say? As the tavern owner, I can't help but feel happy to hear this. Anyway, I see you've been working hard, so I thought you could use a break. So why not come over here and teach these customers the rules of genius invocation? Ha! <laughs> yeah, what kind of break is... Oh, why are we letting all these loafers come in here to play genius invocation TCG anyway? All it does is encourage more people to come to the bar for a drink. <sighs> you know, if drink sales keep going up like this, pretty soon Mondstadt's alcohol industry is gonna reach new heights. <sighs> My dear, you are quite mistaken. You said it yourself, a clear mind is necessary to win. Soon their thirst for victory will overcome their thirst for alcohol. Prince speaks the truth, Diona. Not only is the spread of Genius Invocation TCG no obstacle to your goal of destroying Mondstadt's alcohol industry, it could even support you in this endeavor. C could it really? Sure, why not? Alrighty then, our two customers are waiting to learn. Shuyan, let's put you on drink mixing duty for now. But Shuyan is destined for a far greater purpose. Shuyan! Drink mixing, now. Oh, uh, okay. Ooh, all right. We'll need some space to learn. <laughs> Let's go to that empty table over there. So this is... Oh, so this is what the cat's tail looks like. I always wondered it looks like a fight club or something. Diana's waiting for you. That's what Prince said. You'll be needing your deck, so place that on the table. Uh, deck? Uh, yes. You should have built a deck. You know, a set of cards that meets the bare minimum requirement to play the game. Uh, what's with the blank stairs? Come on. Don't tell me you came to learn Genius Invocation TCG without bringing any cards. That's right. We have some... Uh, yeah. You're gonna need a few more cards than that. Okay, let me think. Oh. <sighs> to learn the game, you'll need at least two character cards to switch between. Oh, oh, that reminds me! A few days ago, when I was closing up for the night, I noticed a customer had left a couple of character cards on the bar counter. <laughs> Maybe you could use those for now. Are you sure? Th eh, it's already been a few days, and he still hasn't come back to claim them. Who knows? Maybe he left them here on purpose. Oh, okay, yeah, I got them here with me. Y you know, j just in case the customer came looking for them. Yeah. <laughs> Not All right, so now we have two character cards. That's everything we need, right? Yep. So, are you ready to start? All right, then let's begin. All right. All right. All right, looks like it's Genius Invocation TCG 101. All right, all right, let's learn the game. So, this is gonna be... <laughs> welcome, welcome to the world of Genius Invocation TCG. Simply put, this is a game where you control character cards to duke it out with your opponent. Pew, pew, pew. Once you've defeated all of your opponent's character cards, victory shall be yours! Oh, okay. Kind of and the, I'm, like, has anybody noticed that this is exactly like Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links? Like, it's, like, it's not even, not even funny. But, it's rather, kind of like that, so, I'm just gonna go with it. Now then, you're gonna need a character on the field to start with. All right, but don't we have any characters on the field already? Oh, 
press to this to choose your character. Okay. Let's go. First, we roll eight elemental dice at the start of every round. Oh, okay. These dice correspond to elemental energy. We'll be spending these dice to perform actions. Hey, this is kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Dungeon Dice Monsters. I like that. Once the roll phase is over, you'll enter the action phase, where the real game starts. During the action phase, you can spend elemental dice to perform various actions. Of course, the most common action is to use character skills. Wow, so it is like like Yu-Gi-Oh and Dungeon Dice Monsters. Cool. So So Searing on Slept deals Pyro damage. Oh, I don't have D-Luke, but I did watch his collected miscellany, so I know how it works. Huh. Not bad. You just made your first attack. During the action phase, both sides will take turns making their moves. After you use a skill to attack your opponent, it's their turn to attack. Ha and ha! I only see, have, oh, have. Once uh, the enemy finishes their move, it's our turn again. Hmm. Okay. Now, these are Omni Element dice. They can be spent on any move, regardless of the elemental type. Wow, so this is kind of, yeah, okay, I understand now. So, we're going to use them to pay for the pyro dice needed for this skill. Go on, give it a try. Okay, use skill, okay. Haha, oh. -ha, yeah. in your face. <laughs> that was pretty good. That's one opponent down for the count. Ba-bam! But the game has only just begun. Remember? You have to defeat all opponents to win. Oh, that's a heavy one. Hmm. As much as we'd like to attack again, seems like we've run out of usable dice. Huh. In that case, let's end this round. After you end round, you won't be able to do anything else this round. And once everyone chooses end round, we can move on to the next round. And a fresh new round means time to roll the dice again. That's how we're going to... All right. Here's the roll face. Go! Dice roll! Ooh, that's some terrible luck. Huh? There's no way we'll be able to use d Luke's skill now. Wait, don't we have the dice to re-roll? Wait, don't we get some dice to re-roll? I mean, come on. But don't worry. Situations like these are why we have the option to... Reroll! <laughs> Once per round, you can select all the dice that you don't like and reroll them. All right, I'm going to say this like Yu-Gi-Oh and Dungeon Dice Monsters. Go! Oh. Go, dice roll! When the action phase 
begins. The player who first chose N round in the previous round takes their turn first. This means that since you finished first the last round, you'll be the first to start this round. Alrighty then, let's learn a little bit about energy and elemental bursts. Wait, elemental bursts? Like, you mean like like how the characters use their super skill? Kind of like when Kai when Kaya summons ice everywhere and D looks Phoenix Phoenix attack, and also Zhang Li's Li's meteor strike. I'm naming the elemental bursts. Or right, so I copyright those. Each time you use a skill, your character will gain one energy. All right. Once Diluc's energy is full, he can use a powerful elemental burst. But we're still one short. Dang it. Never mind. Let's start with a normal attack instead. Okay. So, let me uh, let me let me get this correctly. Let me get this correctly. So, if if we use a normal Elemental attack will fill up the stars to g trigger an elemental burst. Diluc's normal attack only needs one pyro die and two other dice of any type. In any case, your normal attack needs fewer pyro dice than your elemental skill. Man. No, 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 no. You are not defeating my dice on the first try. You only have three energy plus. We have enough pyro elemental dice left over. It's time to use your powerful elemental burst. All right. Elemental burst. Here we go. All right. Mm, so, lesson two switching characters and elemental reactions. All right. In an actual game of Genius Invocation TCG, you need to use multiple character cards to form a party. Oh, kind of like when you need four characters uh, characters to form a party when you're uh, exploring open world. Next up, it's time for your second character card, Kaya, to take the stage. Go, dice roll. Oh, it's too late. Oh. It seems like any move by Kai is going to cost quite a lot of cryo dice. I know what to do. Oh, I get to I get to do it again. Go dice roll. All right. Fra uh. When you deal cryo damage, you'll cause your target to be affected by cryo. I got it. Freeze. <laughs> Good. Now our opponent is affected by cryo. This is a good time to learn about elemental reactions. All right, all right, hit me. Different types of elemental damage affect enemies with different elements. When a character is affected by certain elemental combos, an elemental reaction will be triggered. Oh, so, so like, so like when, so like, like when you hit hit the hit your own character. So when you hit a character's, your opponent's and its character card, 
hard, it triggers an elemental reaction. Kind of like, I'm like, oh yeah, kind of like, kind of like when you're exploring open world, a world, there's elemental reactions for what you reaction. Like when you're in the water, you get wet. That means that that's a hydro elemental reaction. I get it. At the moment, your opponent is affected by cryo, so we should try and use a pyro skill on them. Looks like, oh, that reminds me. Both sides must have one active character, while others are considered standby characters. All right. Okay. All right, so... Normally, we can only use the active character skills. Now, if we want to use the skills of our standby character, we'll have to switch them to the active character. In this case, we'll have to switch to... D Luke, in order to use his skills. All right, select D Luke. All right. You can spend one elemental die of any kind to switch a standby character to the active character. Let's go. Switching characters is an action just like using a skill. So once it's done, it's your opponent's turn. Ooh. Most skills can only target the active character. As you can see, your opponent just attacked D Luke. <sighs> Sorry, I just need to get some water. My lips are dry. So. Most skills can be active. Right. All right then. Now that D Luke is our active character, it's time to use his skill. All right, and D Luke, use your elemental skill. As, uh, all right, use your elemental skill, or searing, searing onslaught, and end this duel. Because the opponent is already affected oh, by damn. cryo. Dealing pyro damage triggers the melt elemental reaction. When triggered, melt increases damage dealt by two. This will allow you to deal loads of damage in one go. <laughs> Genius Invocation's elemental reaction system is pretty cool, huh? D Luke, attack with Searing Onslaught and end this duel. <sighs> Alright, action cards and support effects. Okay. Lesson three. Alright! <laughs> Next up, let's learn how to use card types other than character cards. These cards are all known as action cards. Each time a match starts, you have to draw five action cards to form your starting hand. Go, dice roll! Uh-oh. Looks like we don't have any elemental dice we can spend to make an attack. All right, we will again. Go, dice roll! Seriously? We still don't have any usable dice even after that re-roll? Well, huh, never mind. Even in cases like this, we can still attack. We just need to put the action cards in our hand to good use. Don't underestimate action cards. They can grant all kinds of support and buffs to your active character. Take this one, for example. So playing this action card will require two of these. Uh, see the symbol? Yeah, that means you'll need to play elemental dice of the same type. Some other cards will cost you these instead. The cost requirements for these are much more lenient. 
You can spend any kind of elemental dice. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, though. For now, just play this action card. So it's like an equip spell. So it's like an equip spell. Like on a, like in Yu-Gi-Oh. I activate an equip spell. So, playing an action card from your hand is a form of fast action. Fast actions do not end your current turn. Simply put, you can continue to act even after playing an action card. Well then, <laughs> you have your blade. Time to test it out. But wait, D Luke's elemental skill costs three pyro dice, and right now, we don't even have one. Well, not a problem. This is where we can use a more advanced mechanic known as elemental tuning. By discarding one card from your hand, you can convert one elemental die into the element of your current active character. And this card isn't useful right now, so we might as well use it for elemental tuning. All right, I'm going to put an I discard. I discard one card. A card Sometimes for elemental tuning. You won't be able to perform any actions you want to because you didn't roll the elemental dice you wanted. Oh well. Moving on. Ingenious invocation TCG. Keeping up a constant flow of combat is much more important than the number of cards you have. In this case, well, <laughs> let's just take all these useless cards and use them for elemental tuning. Just like playing cards from your hand, elemental tuning is a fast action. Come on, hurry up! Use elemental tuning to get yourself three pyro dice. Would you look at that! Finally, we now have enough elemental dice to use Searing Onslaught! Alright. Because you have the White Iron Greatsword equipped, Searing Onslaught will deal one extra damage! What? Alright, Searing Onslaught. Alright, D Luke, use your Searing Onslaught and end this duel. <laughs> Alright, it's time to put everything I've learned to the test. Now comes the final part! Oh yeah! It, at this time, we can select any number of cards in our hand to shuffle back into the draw pile, and then draw the same number of new cards. What? Hmm. But which cards to switch? But this one will give, help me deal damage. But this one will be a healing card. adjustments you wish to make to your starting hand, both players have to select their starting active character at the same time. Oh boy, this one's a real doozy. We gotta take it out pronto. Let's see how you do this time. Remember, start by selecting your initial starting character. Alright. Alright, so... Alright. Alright. So what do we know? That is a stone hide lotural. 
Its weakness is... Hmm, it's probably... I'll use a cryo character, a character to start an attack. Ready when you are. Go, dice roll! Alright. Alright. Alright, All right, here we go. Hey, look at you! You sure are getting the hang of these rolls. Now let me teach you one last trick. Free of charge. You can preview your opponent's actions. I mean, that is to say, you can read their intent. Check it out. So here's where you can see all your opponent's intentions for this round. All your opponent's intended actions for the round will be listed here in order. Reference this to come up with effective countermeasures and easily defeat your opponents. Well then, that's the end of the tutorial. You're on your own from here. May victory be yours! Oh no. This is bad. If I don't have to win... Two cryo. Maybe perhaps I can some I can, but no, but my cards are on point. But 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 Diana's cards on point. I have to trust the heart of my deck and draw the right card. Dodge this. What? Just like in Yu-Gi-Oh, I had to trust the heart of the cards and play the right cards right until I had the right one. Cards are on point. I have to trust the heart of my deck and draw wait, the right wait, wait, card. Wait. <laughs> There's one more thing I almost forgot. What? Every time you hit an end phase, you get to draw two cards from your action cards pile. Remember, you have to make use of both your elemental dice and your action cards to win. Oh my god. Maybe you could have told me that before I ended my round? Oh well. Wait. Wait, and I have a fire die, a dice. But if I I use and if I uh, maybe I can reroll, maybe I can reroll for some fire or cryo dice. Okay, I have two and two of these, which means which will cost all uh, any elements of skill. So, go dice roll.
So, hmm, hmm, okay, Diona's opponent has has five HP left, which means means I'll have to play I'll play a big attack. Maybe I can play this one. Yes, yes, with my cry with my glacial walls, I can else I can lure and I can lure her HP. But let's check my hand. I need two with the same element. Good thing I drew these. Good thing I had... Oh, good. Now, um... Oh, dang. I'm... Wait. Freeze! But, I'll have to end my round, a round for now, but I got a plan. Go, dice roll! Yes, I have a few cryo dice. That should, that should totally help me. I'm gonna need need an extra dice roll. Am I if I'm gonna win this duel? So I'll select this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Huh? That should do it. Oh no! Kai is almost out of HP. Oh my God. Maybe I can. Oh. All right, I won! And that's the end of Genius Invocation TCG 101. I think I get the game now. Now that I know the rules, I can I can attempt to make the game in real life. Now let's see how the story turns out. Eight-sided dice. I'm just gonna need eight-sided dice. A uh, dice to do this. All right. All right. Cool. Those are the basics. Did you get all that? What we just played was an adventure challenge designed specially for new players. Genius Invocation TCG can be played in dual mode, where each player brings three character cards, or in adventure challenge mode. But the rules are all the same. As long as you understand the basics, then you should be able to take on any of those rowdy booze hounds. Although I feel there are still many details to grasp, I think I understand the basic premise of the game now. That was quite the detailed explanation. I didn't know the Cat's Tale's famous mixologist